Simplified Chaos, Episode 14. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to start leading a more purposeful life. This is Simplified Chaos. Hey, hey, wonderful friends. Welcome to Simplified Chaos. I am Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my husband, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? And our daughter is in bed, asleep, pretty early. It's only like 7 o'clock, and uh, she decided to pass out, and we didn't even put her in her pajamas yet. So it's kind of funny that she's sleeping in her overalls right now. I thought we were going to do this a little bit later tonight, but the opportunity arose, and we were able to do it a little bit earlier. And this is going to kind of be our normal schedule now is... We have to do it when she goes to bed. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do it. Yeah. If any of you have been listening to our earlier episodes, uh, in the beginning, Lucille was definitely with us. She would breastfeed and fall asleep and be kind of chill and silent. And now she is just up a lot and wanting to play and explore. And it's just a season of life we're in. So we're like, we got to wait till she goes to sleep because it's just not going to happen when she's in here. Not at all. But yeah. No, we're we're back. We're doing a full episode this week after our little short break last week. It was That'll m- kind of tie into our topic today. Yeah, it was much needed. Absolutely. So what are we diving into? Today's topic is all about mindset shift. Mindset shifts. Did I say shit? Mm, you might have. Shifts. Shift. Shift. S-H-I-F-T. Shift. Got it. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to be covering about how changing our mindset to one that's more open, filled with gratitude, and a lot more intention has pretty much pivoted our entire life to be better, happier, healthier, and just kind of deal with the chaos of life so much better. It just yeah. simplifies everything in life, I think. Mindset's huge. Uh, I agree. It's that one... I guess, thing that we can do that just can completely change a lot of aspects of our life. And I think people forget that it all starts with the brain. <laughs> How the brain think. is a tricky thing. It's pretty miraculous. It messes with a lot of people too. But hey, there's resiliency involved and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Hard work, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But before we get into our topic for today, as always, we're going to start with a little gratitude today. Sounds good. Yeah. You want me to start? Or yeah, go start? ahead. Okay. Do it. Uh, today, I'm grateful for my hip flexor strain. Okay. I did not see that one coming. And how are you going to spin that into a positive? So for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, um, this week I strained pretty badly my hip flexor to the point where I was crying. I was so much, I was in pain so much and Nick had to run to 7-Eleven to get me painkillers because I could not get comfortable. It was just agonizing. He, he thought I was giving birth in our bedroom pretty much. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I didn't go to school Friday. Um, I've just been resting a lot and it sucks that I have to rest and lay down a lot, but It's really forcing me to slow down. And I know with, you know, having a baby. It's hard for you to slow down. It is. And I know the importance of movement. And I feel like I try to squeeze in movement as much as I can when I can. And today I was really appreciating the fact that it forced me to slow down because I was outside on the porch with Lucille while you were going through the garage. Mm. Organizing it. and Yeah. I wouldn't say organizing. <laughs> moving say things around. Moving things around and getting rid of stuff um, in preparation <laughs> to get rid of more stuff. <laughs> but yeah, because I was forced, like I can't walk around a lot. And because I was forced to just sit, I was sitting outside with Lucille and she was just playing with this little simple blade of grass that just <laughs> occupies her time. I mean, that's where kids toys are just, why do they, why are they even out there? Mm, we don't need Don't them. need kids toys. But anyway, um, I normally probably would have took her on a stroller ride and been like zooming all over the neighborhood trying to get some movement in. But because I was forced to sit down and just be, I got to watch the neighborhood kids play. They're still out there right now. All types of games. And it just, it's so refreshing to see kids outside playing games. They're playing capture the flag. They're playing some kind of crazy. Yeah, they're playing shit I haven't even heard of. Right? I was 
I need to go ask them some more questions because they were playing a game that was like tag, but involved zombies and somebody had to be a doctor. And I'm like, hold up, like this game looks really cool. I kind of want to know the rules so I can play it and then teach my second grader how to play it. But it was so awesome just sitting and watching that. And then we got to talk to our neighbor who was out. And that would have never happened unless I was forced to just sit on my porch Mm -hmm. and just hang with Lucille. Yeah. Man, those kids have been out since at least 2.30 today. Because that's when we came back from where we were earlier. mm -hmm. And they're still at it. And it's uh, 7.30 now. That's awesome, by the way. Get out there and move. Just get outside, period. Yeah. Um, so that is why I'm grateful for this struggle. And it's it's funny how I'm, because of my mindset shift, I can find what the silver lining is or the lesson to be learned out of anything that seems like a problem or a struggle. It may take longer than other times, but today, it hit me today. Like, this is fucking rad that I'm forced to sit and just be and watch the kids play. Like, it sounds cheesy, but it's really freaking cool that's awesome way to take a uh a painful experience and turn it into a positive because i know this hasn't been easy for you and yeah it was i i did feel like the other day when you were woke up at one o'clock in the morning yes it was one o'clock in the morning people that you know it, it reminded me of when you were delivering lucille with no meds and mm-hmm. that was like the worst thing to watch because you see somebody you love just in complete agony and i knew that you were at a point where you needed something. So yeah, I'm glad you're feeling better and you're taking this and turning this into a positive learning experience. I mean, why complain about something? It's just, to me, it's like a waste of energy. Yeah. I'm also grateful for you, honey, for running out in the middle of the night to buy painkillers for me. Can I just put that in there? You're a freaking superhero. it 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 was like waking up and tending to Lucille, except I had to drive a car. (laughs) <laughs> Which was fine. No, it, it took 10 minutes, so I'd do it again. You're awesome. So for me, let's shift gears. For me, I am grateful for YouTube. YouTube? YouTube. Why is that? Because I'm going to do something in the next couple of weekends, and I'm going to build two raised garden beds out in the backyard so oh. that we can start planting some vegetables and being a little bit more self-sufficient and knowing exactly where our food source is coming from. This is pretty exciting. And so YouTube has a ton of people who like to make videos about building raised gardens and different methods for planting raised and raised gardens. And I've gained a lot of knowledge. I feel confident that I'm going to build a nice raised garden bed and that we're going to have some fresh vegetables later on this year i i hope i don't suck at gardening but i'm really excited about this we just got to plant it and water it and we're good and talk to the plants and give them love i mean you can do that you got to talk to living things and show them some love and that's what helps them grow yeah so you know i'm i'm really excited i like doing these kinds of projects i've I've got a ton of projects that i want to do this summer and youtube is going to be my source for some of them but yeah, no, it's I like YouTube. If you think about it, YouTube, I feel like could replace colleges. I know that sounds silly. That's but a I feel whole like, another podcast I know, but episode. I feel like you can I learn very passionate anything about. you want. If you want to, anything you want to learn about or get better at, you can find resources on YouTube and be successful at it. <laughs> Man, I really want to go off on a tangent right now, but I'm not going to do it. All right, I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. What we ha- hold in our hands every day, meaning our cell phones. Oh, I was like this cocktail I'm holding well, right now. <laughs> every day, Jill. <laughs> oh, come never on. mind. That's all yeah, I'm all not right. an alcoholic, guys. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but mobile phones, we have access to anything we want at the tip of our hands. It's kind of scary, but it's scary. But at the same time, same time, everybody. I mean, I'm talking people who don't have a lot in life have a smartphone, true, and can do things to learn and improve their lives. And I'm not saying it's without easy paying for an education. Without I mean. paying for an education, so yeah, true but that. yeah, I'm not going to get into that. We're <laughs> ten minutes into this podcast episode already, and I want to shift gears and actually talk into our topic. But we will get to that in the future. We will. We will. Absolutely. So mindset. What's up, Jilly? 
Um, so I thought I we kind of could separate kind of what our mindset has changed to and how it's affected our relationship, how it's affected how we are at home, how it's affected at work, and just sure. relationships with people because mindset has ultimately changed everything yeah and i think a lot of people take it for granted or they may say that's so cheesy like showing gratitude to stuff like kind of like i overheard our neighbor talking about marie kondo when she was saying how the kids thought it was silly how you know we're thanking our clothes and you know saying this served a purpose and a lot of people probably laugh at it but really to take time and just be grateful for everything we have around us it's it's, not it's what we do, life-changing though but a lot of people don't even take the time to think that they have a roof over their head, they have food at their table, that they have clean water that they can drink. It's it's something that we take for granted every day. Absolutely. And when, you know, something bad happens to us, it's the worst thing and worst thing in the world for them. Whereas, you know, the worst thing in the world for them could be they could be starving out on the street with nothing, you know. So it it is all about mindset. And there was a really good I know I'm gonna do a quote at quote of the day at the end but there was a good quote to start it off and it's from marcus tullius cesario and he says gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues but the parent of all others and i feel like that is so true it is definitely the parent or the adult before all of the other virtues and it is so needed first i think it's essential because our mindset i know i don't know about you um but i it takes a lot of practice to change your mindset it does a lot it really does consistently and i think a lot of people think that oh it's easy to change your mindset and you know um i can be gr- i can be grateful for this and this and then they kind of go back to their own ways and they may be complaining more or just going back to just the way they were and i'm not saying that's a bad thing right. but i will say that being open Staying open and being non-judgmental and just being grateful for everything, it takes a lot of hard work. It's very hard. And I I think some people don't, they think it's easy being positive all the time or just trying to find the silver lining in things. And they're like, oh, that person's happy all the time. But it takes really hard, like, I feel like it's harder to be positive and to see see the good in things Mm -hmm. versus to complain and see the negative. Like... I try to tell my kids that at school that it's really easy to be mean. It's really easy to judge. It's really easy to say negative things. It's really hard to stop yourself and try to change that thinking and to something more positive. And I think a lot of people maybe stop trying to be positive because they realize it is hard work and maybe they don't know that you have to practice it every day. You have to have something in your life that reminds you to be this way every day. Well, and I think a lot of it is there's just so much negativity yes. these days and we see it in our workplaces and we, we see it in our homes. We see it on TV. Yes. I mean, the news is, is basically just a big dump of negative energy. It's like somebody it's was shot, news. you know, somebody, you know, overdosed, somebody, you know, committed arson. Um, you know, our president did this, our president did this, that. And it, it's just like, all of it is just, there's nothing positive anymore you have people complaining and it just rubs off on everybody else this is why i don't watch the news (laughs) why put that negative crap in my brain like i don't need it yeah and and, you know i I do think it's important to know what's going on within your community within your you know your country and everything like that but i mean just nobody is reporting anything good and when they do it's kind of sprinkled in towards the end um see i wouldn't even know because i don't really watch the news anymore but Anytime but I it's hear something, affecting it's the way that we, you know, with our mindsets and our conversations, and like our conversations. you go into work and people want to talk about something to complain about. And it's sad that that's how we're complaining about. And it's usually another coworker who, who may be like the sweetest person, but you know, they did something or they looked at them the wrong way. And you know, now it's time to just completely unload. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, no, th- th- we've got to stop thinking about all the negative things and and like just like with your hip flexor try to find the good in things but we're we're so quick to to find that the bad in things because we we have these preconceived notions about the way things should be and and we really i feel like we really just don't listen to other people anymore 
and try to relate to how they either feel or the reason why they think that way. And because we already have these preconceived notions or these biases and whatever anybody else says is wrong. Yeah. But I, I, I really would like to challenge people to just, you know, think openly and, you know, you may not agree with that other person, but at least try to understand where they're coming from so that you can maybe see why they're thinking that way. But it's, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with that. But yeah, I think it's important to just slow down our reaction. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to quickly react um, to adults, to kids. It's, you know, it's very easy to quickly judge. And I think just, you know, kind of like we've changed the way we live, just slowing it down. I think that's important that we slow our thinking mm -hmm. down and our reactions to just look at the, we don't know the whole story. We see a small snippet of, you know, somebody's life or an experience or, you know, an injury and we're quick to find the negative in it. And I think if we stop and like, just pause and really think about like, do I know the whole story? Do I know this person well? Mm -hmm. Do I know what's going on in their life? And most of the time the answer is we don't. You know, it's funny that you bring that up. It reminds me, I have a really difficult time with driving mm. and, <laughs> and with just people doing things on the road. And I, I tend to curse or, or, or whatever at, at somebody. And you're always like, you know, you, you don't need to do that. You don't know what's going on in this person's life. And it just kind of, I find myself anytime that I do get mad behind the wheel, like I immediately feel regret that I lashed out or said something because it's, I, it always comes back to what you tell me is like, you know, I have no idea what's going on in this person's life. Like that guy who we were coming back from the market today and I was going a little bit above the speed limit on this back road. It was like the speed limit was 30 and I was going 35, but this guy had, you know, on my butt didn't really say anything. Usually I'll, I'll tell Jill like, yeah, this guy's riding my ass or whatever. Didn't say anything. And then the next thing you know, this guy on, you know, there's the double yellow just had to get around me and, you know, took off. But you know what? I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm starting to come around. <laughs> I know you're, you're trying. And that's why I try, I try not to like say you shouldn't do that. Like, why do you have to be so like, raging on the road but i know you did drive to dc and i know driving to dc is man that's probably completely changed your mindset holy cow, <laughs> i'm glad i didn't have to do that but i just like to just say things that maybe make you think a different way because yeah. our brain could say oh this is what happened and this is what i think but really we really don't know what's going on with other people right um but anyway um yeah so that's what i want to talk about how it's reflected at the home and me and at work and I think it's best to start at home yeah so changing my mindset from um, just being grateful for everything that we have and one with more intention has completely helped us save money mm -hmm. um, it's helped me realize that we have enough we we don't need to buy the next best thing right um, it's helped me to stop buying mindlessly when I go to Target and it's helped me even just go shopping. Like I I would go shopping and just pick up things randomly like decorations and say, oh, we should have this, we should have this because that's what I was programmed to think like that's what right. people do. People are constantly buying decorations and re-upping their home and it even kind of stopped me wanting to renovate everything in our home because when you're on social media, it's always like, that's cool. Like, why don't we have that? I'm always comparing and saying, I right. want that, I want that. And I even had a blog post because I have stopped wanting my dream kitchen. I was getting ready to bring that up <laughs> because, you know, we have renovated a couple of things in the house here, um, done a couple of additions. Well, not additions, but, you know, um, replaced the deck with a patio. We These were all redid, things that yeah. needed, though. Like They, they did need to be done. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the one thing we've always talked about was, like, you know, the kitchen. And we've replaced all the appliance in the kitchen, but no, not we, the stove. Not, but the I was going to say we haven't done the stove, and I wanted to replace it, but we don't need to. Plus. And you know, we we finally it was right when we were in that that mind shift um, that you know we don't need to do all this stuff. You know, we we were paying two cars, we were paying for HVAC. It was like, yep. why are we going to add this on top of something else that we were paying for? You know, we've been able to do some creative things around the house where. You know, we have our kitchen and then where our traditional dining room should be, 
is we just kind of swapped rooms. Big ass butler's pantry is basically what yeah. we're calling it. We we brew our coffee in there. We have additional plates and everything like that. It's where the dogs eat. But it's a room that we weren't using and we found a purpose for. And we're in there every day now because we've made those changes to the house. And I think it's easy to say, like, we need to change this. We need to do this. But when you think about things and you say, I don't want to spend money, you find creative ways to repurpose things that you already have. And that's when the creative juice is flowing. When you don't ha- when you don't go out there and buy you know, just anything you want. It's like, let's think of what we have and how mm-hmm. can we can reuse what we have or change things around to make it work for us. And I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that. Right, right. But yeah, so I, like just looking back at our kitchen, um, something that reminds me, this is the hard work. This is the part where we need constant reminders. It's very easy to go on Instagram and see these beautiful kitchens and think, I want this kitchen. Oh, these open shelves are amazing. Oh, I want my kitchen mm-hmm. to look like this. I want white countertops. I want a farmhouse sink. But I made a sign in our kitchen that forces me or almost reminds me every day to stop that type of thinking. Yeah. And it's a sign that it says, William Street Kitchen. And the reason I made this sign is because my grandparents used to live in Baltimore City on William Street. And their kitchen was so tiny. It was very tiny. I, I remember going over there for Thanksgiving and we had to do shifts because yes. it was so tiny. You know, you'd we have three shifts, yep. four, or four people at the table. When those four people were done, the next shift went in. When those four people were done, the next shift went in. Yep. But we made it work and it was yeah. it was awesome. It was cozy. But yeah, no, it was. And they didn't have the latest greatest. They didn't have, you know, the beautiful granite countertops and the beautiful open shelves. They just had what they needed and we had the best times in those kitchen like (laughs) i learned how to bake a pie with my grandmother i i learned how she prepared the turkey and made stuffing and thinking about all the great oh my god i'm gonna start crying um thinking about i will say (laughs) that the food line yes from the willies that's been passed down or the (laughs) panels that's been passed down we're now reaping the benefits because you know we got a lot of things that you guys made, like the crab cakes that you guys make yeah. are just phenomenal. Um, so just thinking of all the experiences that we had in that kitchen, and not once when I was a kid growing up, not once when I stepped in that kitchen was I ever thinking, wow, my grandmother's kitchen is like horrible. Like she could really do this. <laughs> she could really renovate that. It was always, I was so happy to be in there, no matter how yeah. small it was. It's because of the people and the experiences you have. It has nothing to do with the latest greatest appliances or what you have or the brand name and seeing that sign every day and going in my kitchen it reminds me that we have enough and i don't need to constantly change the stuff in our life to be happy it's the people and the experiences and how you make it and what you make it and that is my constant reminder every day i want to compare and buy something and do something and so far it's it's worked like a charm (laughs) And it's funny, like a lot of what you're saying, just kind of, I'm thinking of like multiple episodes that we've done talking about things that we've done, like decluttering, meal prepping, and and, and everything that we've talked about thus far has always been about our mindset and and where we're at. Mm. And us consciously, you know, we're, we're being more intentional with the things that we do and You know, we've simplified our lives enough where we have more time for the people that we love and care about. You know, we have time to take long walks. We don't have to be busy all the time. So our mind shift has has really freed us, you know, from the the burdens of trying to do it all, trying to do it all, (laughs) trying to buy it all and trying to trying to keep up with everybody and try to, quote unquote, you know, live the American dream. But I mean, I. I don't know what the American dream is anymore. Like for our grandparents and stuff it's like that, di- it, was, it, was, it was escaping, well. um, you know, places where, you know, they were they were held down. You know, they came to this country and, you know, we're able to make something themselves. But we've made something to ourselves and we've turned to consumerism now. And we are mindless um, consumerism. Mindless consumerism. Yeah. It's almost like brainwashing now. Like oh, you need is. this and, 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 with advertising. And it's like you have to like deprogram your brain or just take those things like i know cutting cable has helped us with seeing all those commercials and thinking you need this you need this and that's helped tremendously at just cutting cable like yeah but we still get it on instagram you know and you know i'm on facebook only because this is a way for us to 
promote the podcast, but I also Just run a couple. Listeners, yeah. I run a couple of business sites as well, so I need to be on there and just the amount of advertising but I, i've i've now am in the mindset to really just ignore that shit like i don't look at any of the advertisings anymore i don't look at anything that i'm like oh my god i need to be doing this like i understand people go on vacations we go on vacations i don't get jealous of people who go on vacations anymore yeah would it be nice to be in in key west or something <laughs> like that sure it would be great but you know we'll have our chance and like just like anything so I just don't let that stuff affect me. And what do you I think really that's hard le- though? Or do you think it's easy to like I think it's stop very hard. yourself well, from so thinking, especially that you want that or need that? Maybe not people our age. I mean, I think people our age, you know, and, and full disclosure, I'm 37. Um, but like the younger generation that's coming up, and, and I work for a company that that deals with you know mental health. And these kids who are just growing up with knowing nothing but social media, seeing these advertisements, seeing their friends out having fun without them, it is so mentally challenging for them because they feel left out. They feel like they have to live up to a certain expectation. And if they don't have this certain item that, you know, that they're, you know, a failure or, or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and so there, there's no wonder that there's a rise in mental health issues or mental health problems, however you want to word it, you know, with the younger generation. And, you know, yeah. that's part of the things that I worry about with, you know, Lucille, obviously she's, she's one year old and we have a long time to kind of figure that out. But do we, I mean, she already knows what a phone is and is intrigued by, you know, pushing up and down and seeing the screen move. You know, how long would it take? You know, what, is it three, four years old when she's then like, I need this, I need that, I need that? And how do you, you know, talk about a mindset with a, a four year old? That's something we don't have to stress about now. And we will no, tackle but it's just something I, I think no, about. I but I mean, there are people out there now who are, who are dealing with that and have no idea what to do. No, but it's funny you say that because I did see a quote and I forgot who it was by, but they say that the most stressors come from thinking about the future or thinking about the past. Yeah. And I kind of, it just goes back to like, why aren't we happy with just being and just being in the moment and not always wanting what's next and thinking about what's next. And it's really hard to, it's like we're wired, we're wired to do what society is doing around us. And it's Mm -hmm. really hard to go against the grain. And I think that's why having gratitude and changing your mindset to appreciate what you have is so hard because we are wired in this society with advertising and social media to want the next best thing and to upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And it's really hard to train our brains not to do that because mm-hmm. we're constantly like submerged in that kind of environment. Well, yeah, and again, advertising's gotten so good that if they make it feel like if you don't have this product, you're missing out. You're the only person who doesn't have it. And that's where you really have to train your brain, like that you are yeah. enough. And that kind of goes to the topic of, so we talked about the home, mm-hmm. just talking about myself. So having that mindset that, Um, I am enough no matter what my body looks like, no matter what my hair looks like, no matter what I look like, that as long as I'm feeling good and I'm happy and I feel healthy, that I'm great. Yeah. And just changing the wording of instead of like, oh my God, I have to go shopping or I have to go shopping for food. Uh, I have to go on a walk with Lucille and I don't feel like it to I'm able to. Right. So instead of I have to, it's I'm able to do this. Like, I should be so grateful that I have two arms to carry Lucille. I should be so grateful that I can drive a car to go buy groceries. And we take so many things for granted that we do every day. Mm -hmm. And I think just changing my mindset has just helped me appreciate my body for all that it is and all that it can do and versus what it can't do and what it doesn't look like. Yeah. We're all freaking unique and unique. Like that needs to be celebrated more. Like why do we always have to compare ourselves and that's kind of why i stopped following certain people on instagram like people that are super super fit and have well they describe themselves as quote unquote fit or may have six packs and look a certain way i had to stop on following that and it's not because i don't love what they're doing i think that's great yeah it works for them if i am constantly submerged with that and see that on my feed it's gonna make me feel worse about myself and i don't need to do that so i just kindly unfollow them and just embrace what i have and that has helped me Kindly unfollow. I like that. <laughs> I do. But it's it's the same thing. It's like you are who the people you surround yourself with. For sure. And if you want to, you know, 
you know, be a positive person, you need to surround yourself with positive people. If you want to be a curmudgeon, you're probably surrounding yourself with curmudgeons. I love the word curmudgeon. It's it makes me think word. of like the old man from Up. I don't. <laughs> I know you've never seen Up, but it makes me think of Bill Belichick. Oh, he's a coach of the Patriots. I just know so he was know. a coach. Okay. I'm like it's something sport. Related. He's a curmudgeon. Yeah, we're gonna uh, make sure we uh, win next week. <laughs> just focus on next week. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not saying that, like, these people are bad. It's just, it's not for the season of life I'm in. And right. it's just not, well, it's not what's thing. right for me. And yeah. people need to do what's right for them and stop doing what they think they have to do. Right. Um, so that's what I, that's what I all had to say about for the whole me. me. <laughs> and for, for me, I, I've always been, or at least I always felt like I had to be, like, a people pleaser. And Really? Yeah, it just, you know. I'm always like thinking about what would other people think of if I did this? What would other people think if I did that? I didn't know that. I was like that. But I feel like everyone has a little bit of that. Like, yeah. Was, in them yeah. too. But th- I would say that's completely changed. And I think, you know, with Lucille being born, like, I don't care anymore. Like, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk, with a, a, you know, sing to my kid, talk in a baby voice if I want to, you know, and, and, and past Nick, I don't think would have done that. But, um, you know, just to, to think of what people are judging me. But, you know, at this point, I, I don't care anymore. I'm I'm comfortable with who I am. You know, I, I think one of the cool things about, you know, me and you is like on the very first date that we had, I was able to drop down my guard and like completely be myself. So like, I don't want you after this podcast worrying like, oh, what is Nick keeping from me or anything like that? I've felt comfortable with you from day one and letting you know what's on my mind and just being my complete self. And I want to thank you for, you know, allowing me to do that. But like, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of the times I was just like, you know, well, what is somebody else going to think if I do this? And, you know, I, I should commit to this because, you know, I don't want to make them think I'm an asshole, but like people have shit going on, you know, and you have to tend to yourself first. And really we think people care, but they, they don't, don't care as much as we no. think. It's like we train our brain to think, Almost back to that, our simplified wardrobe uh, episode about how yeah. we think people are like paying attention to what we wear and they notice what we wear all the time. And it's like, we're too consumed with ourselves to even think about we, what other people are doing. Right? So it's like, I think that's another mind shift change. It's like, once you are grateful for what you have and your body, and no matter where you are in life, once you appreciate your body for what you are, you gain confidence and then you stop giving a shit what mm-hmm. people think of you, which just helps even more parts it's so freaking liberating yeah um but anyway so do you think we can go on to the work scenario sure yeah that was my my (laughs) mind thing was just yeah trying to please other people so let's let's shift to work all right so changing your mindset has holy cow um i already know you you know that it's affected my job as a teacher tremendously love your mind shift mindset (laughs) shift mind shift (laughs) mindset shift on this because I've seen you grow so much over the last shit seven years yeah but in particularly but in particular the last two years I think has been seen your your biggest growth as far as how you approach teaching and the kids yeah and um, there are some resources we're going to share that has definitely added to this mindset shift, especially when it comes to kids. But I am a second grade teacher, and I think um, changing my mindset to doing things with intention and purpose has completely changed the way I'm teaching. And before, I was that person that was a curriculum follower, and would it was almost like a Bible. And I'm still creative, but I would really rely on that curriculum in teaching. Right. And now... I I really haven't looked at the curriculum. I'm not going to lie. I look at what I need to teach, but I'm more looking at my kids and I'm listening to my kids and I'm building relationships with them and I'm finding out what makes kind of what's what's going on in their lives and what's interesting to them and I'm building whatever I'm teaching around them. And it's completely changed my world. It's made me enjoy teaching more. It's made my life less stressful at school and even though we are forced to do specific testing, I hate to say this, but I could give a shit about my test scores. Fuck that. I really could. And I know that there are some jobs that require tests. Like I had to take a test to be a teacher. Lawyers have to take a test. To be a doctor, you have to take a test. And I understand that they have their place, but 
Do we need that many tests to help kids be prepared for the world? I don't fucking think so. No, it's it's all about experience at the end of the day. Like you, yes. you can teach people textbook shit, but it doesn't translate to the real world. It doesn't. And the only way people learn are through experience, through failure. And we have to let our kids fail. We have to let our kids be themselves. And we don't give them enough credit. You know, we always think that, you know, we know best for them. But, you know, they're human we beings. Don't. They're a human being. They we know have how to feelings. keep them safe. Yeah. But we don't know what's best because we no. aren't them. And they're different than us. And it takes a lot of hard work to train your brain to say that, I, I'm not going to be quick to fix your mistakes or I'm going to let you struggle, but the struggle is where you learn the most. Right. And I've completely changed the pace of how I'm teaching. I'm not rushing the kids through things anymore. I have slowed down so much of the learning because it's built around them. Mm-hmm. I want to give them time to talk and have real authentic conversations about topics they want to talk about and just deliver content that is meaningful to them. And I try so hard to relate it to what they're going through because I don't know about you, but when I think about my most memorable experiences at school, it's usually because we were doing something hands-on or it was really fun. So I try to think about what was exciting to me as a kid and do that with my kids. And I think we sometimes forget what it's like to be in a classroom. And I know... As a teacher, when we have to go to professional development, there may be a topic that might be interesting, there may not be, and sitting in a classroom or sitting down for long periods of time freaking stinks. Like, I need to be up moving around. I I like the freedom to do what I want to do. If I want to get up and move, I do that. Like, we're you know, since we're adults, we al- they allow that, but when you think about a classroom, if somebody if a kid gets up and starts moving around, we think they're not paying attention or we think that they're not focused. But we need to think back to us. Like, how would we feel if we were constricted in a seat in a desk for like 30 minutes to an hour? Yeah. Like, it's just not right. Like, my whole mindset on what a traditional classroom looks like has completely been blown out of, like, I don't even think about it anymore. Yeah. Like, if the kids want to move, they move. And someone may come in my classroom and say, wow, this classroom looks like it's out of control. But you know what? It's we controlled have controlled chaos. We have boundaries. The kids... If you come up to my kids and have conversations with them, they're going to know exactly what we're talking about. They're Mm going to know exactly what we're learning. They're going to be able to have great conversations because I'm more about doing things for a purpose, like being able to socially interact with people and be kind to people. And I think social skills and emotional skills are taken for granted. And I really like to hone in on that. And when you think about kids that age, when they ask a question, they're asking a question because they're still genuinely curious about the answer. They haven't gotten to that point where you've been told that you can't ask this or it's inappropriate to ask that. They ask a question because they're genuinely interested or genuinely curious about yeah. what it is that they're asking. And, and for me, that just opens up and that's a learning experience in itself. The fact that they asked a question, and it may sound rudimentary or, or, or very simple to us, but at the, the same time, we don't know what that kid knows. And they're genuinely, I can't say curious right now, <laughs> but they're curious. So we need to we need to be open about asking questions. And, and as adults, we need to ask more questions. You know, we, we again, it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier. We're so quick to judge. And, and when somebody doesn't have the same opinion or belief as you, you write them off and you say, oh, this guy's full of shit or whatever. But at the same time, we're not asking questions at all. We're not trying to dive in to see why people think that way. And you may not, at the end of the conversation, you still might not agree with what they have to say. But at least you're able to figure out why that person has that mindset, why they think that way. And that goes back to just staying open to opinions that aren't the same. And I think that's what makes life interesting is to talk to people who think completely differently. And I think we can learn God, from you that. You never know what you're going to be able to learn. Like you, yeah. just asking a simple question, you know, it, that's why I think it's funny. Like people who are afraid to go in a bar by themselves. I mean, that's a great place to meet interesting people and ask just a lot of questions and, and really maybe get to know something that you have no idea about beforehand. But that involves doing something that's the unknown. It's, yeah. you know, you can't be looking down at your phone. Yes. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I know we'll we'll move on. I don't know if you have anything to share about the workplace, but I just thought of this specific um, event that happened in the classroom the other day. 
And the old Jill teacher would have quickly written off this experience and just quickly try to solve it and do it for the student and then move on. But the new improved mindset shift, doing everything with a purpose, Jill, um, one of my students was trying to find a piece of paper that we have this book log inside the classroom that the kids, you know, they write down the books they read. And after so many books, you know, I like to reward the kids and give them prizes. So this one student could not find her book log. She's like tearing apart her desk. Things are flying on the floor everywhere. And the kids are just kind of looking at her. And the old me probably would have been like, like, go move your clip. Like, this is unacceptable. Like, you're making a mess in the classroom. You're treating your things wrong. But the new me thought, like, I don't know the whole story. Right. I don't know why she's throwing the books. And instead of just disciplining her and reacting quickly, I walked over to her and I said, hey, how are you feeling? She's like, I'm really upset. I can't find my book log. And I worked really hard on it. Oh. Right? And I said, okay, how about I sit down with you and I help you find it? And she was like, all right. So as we're gently like picking up the things off the floor and this student, if I were to told her to, to pick it up, I already know that she probably would have said no because sometimes when she's so heated in certain situations, she doesn't want to listen. And I only know that because I've gotten to know her. Right. Whereas the old me maybe thinks I know them, but also the judgment when it came in, the assumptions would have came in and knows like she's defiant, she doesn't listen, but I, I know how she reacts. And when she feels certain ways, it that's the way she reacts. But anyway, as we're going through things, I'm just talking about tips on how to stay organized. Like, hey, <laughs> why, don't we put it, why don't we put it in this folder? So that way, you know, you know where it is all the time. And why don't we take all these papers that were in your folder that should be at home? And instead of saying, you should have taken these home, like, why are they still in here? I said, why don't I get a big Ziploc bag? And we put all of these papers in a big Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. And that way you have plenty of room in your folder. Because I said, what happens when like, there's too many papers in your folder? And she's like, oh, it's going to break. And I was like, exactly. So that was a lesson in itself. And these are life skills that we take for granted, like how to stay organized how to calmly solve a problem. And instead of me reacting and being a quote unquote, what disciplining teacher or controlling, like what the typical teacher may or should be doing, I took the time to sit with her, have a conversation. She reorganized her desk. She felt so much happier and it made me feel better. And these are the experiences that I thought weren't important because I had to teach content, content, content. Right. But I'm realizing these are the best experiences that the kids are gonna remember. Someone taking the time to help them solve problems that are really important to them. We think they're minor, but these are problems that are their world. Well, and and it's also gonna change where maybe this student will now take the time to help somebody else solve a problem because you took the time I can only to hope. help her solve a problem. That's the mystery of teaching. You know, you put you put all this time and attention into um, teaching lessons and you hope that they carry them on, but mm-hmm. really, I have no idea, but it is a joy to see these kids come up to me and give me hugs as the years progress. And I can only hope that (laughs) I instill some little speck of joy and gratitude into them. And I'm getting better each year. And thinking back to the old teacher, Jill, like I can't say I'm regretful because I would have never learned the lessons I had unless I was that way, unless I was that teacher that thought had to do whatever teacher I saw, like discipline, hard, you know, control kids have to be seated in a desk like if i didn't go through that struggle i would have never been the teacher i am today that's awesome so i'm sorry it took me a while to talk to that story but i feel like it really resonated with my mindset shift and again my this mindset shift takes time takes a lot of patience but i feel like those are the lessons that matter the most the ones that take the longest Mm -hmm. the ones that take more time that take more energy it's not a quick fix yeah but anyway, I don't know if you've had a mindset sh- shift. I mean, mine's change at been work. pretty minor. I've been in a couple of different jobs over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm at a company now where I can see myself for a very long time, and a lot of it, you know, I, I've I've gone from sales and I'm now in the marketing, and it, it is a little bit of a pivot, but because I know sales, it makes marketing a little bit easier for me because I know what the salespeople are looking for when it comes to marketing, but for me, it's been a constant learning process over the last maybe four years, particularly when it comes to marketing, because I did come from a sales background and I had no marketing experience. But now that I do have the experience and I feel like where I'm at now, I'm able to speak more confidently about 
what it is that we need to do in order to you know attract people to our website or attract people and you know generate leads and put them through the buyer's journey and provide content at any given point at the right context of the buyer's journey so i'm more confident as far as being able to provide a suggestion and run with that even if i disagree with my boss um you know i'm like well i disagree with you this is what i would do and then you know work out a compromise but you know the old me might have been like okay well my boss you know doesn't want to do that so i'm just going to run with whatever he or she wants to do but if I feel like I know what I'm doing is right, I'm stepping up and saying, this is the way I want to do it. And I think that and it's working. And I know it's because also you take the time and effort to educate yourself about that topic. And I think education, educating yourself, taking the initiative to learn more is what helps build confidence in yeah. just feeling confident in yourself and but still being open to learning new things yeah. too yeah so i mean that's been kind of my mind shift is is because i've been learning over the last four years about marketing you know at first it was you know well maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong but now i'm much more confident in my abilities and what it is that we need to do in order to promote our business Gotcha. And same thing with the podcast. I mean, it's translating to this as well as, you know, how do we promote the business? And, you know, this summer we have a goal of starting a website and a blog to supplement what we're doing here, which I know is going to add a little bit more to what we're doing. But, you know, I, I think it adds value to our listeners and, and you know, can possibly attract new listeners who could benefit from the topics that we're talking about. Because I know we have absolutely benefited from other podcasts and definitely if we can help keep that domino effect going and help contribute to somebody else's lives like i am so for that and it's worth the time it's worth the effort yeah and we've been getting feedback and that feedback even if it's something small is what kind of helps motivate us to keep going so thank you guys if any of you have written a review on itunes or just you know messaged us on instagram like you are what makes us keep going. So we really appreciate that. And if you are getting any value out of any of these episodes, especially this one, please screenshot it and just put it out into the world because we just want to, you know, reach more people and you never can know help who you're one person. Help That's awesome. Exactly. Um, how are we on time, honey? We're, we're good. We're good? Yeah. Um, can we talk into one more category? Let's do it. Okay. So slipping into the category of kids slipping in or babies okay. we can go bo both ways because i know i interact more with kids as a teacher yeah but you interact more with the baby Lucy. i do so my mindset shift has it's even changed since the first year of teaching like i understand child development but we constantly need those reminders because there's constantly things going on in our life that fill up our brain and there's things that are pushed towards the back part of our brain sure. or that exit our brain that we forget about. So I think it's really important to constantly keep reminding ourselves of how kids work, how they develop, because that makes us be better parents, mm -hmm. better friends, better leaders, better co-travelers, whatever you want to call it, um, better teachers. And just knowing this has just help me slow down and that goes back to that thinking first before reacting yeah and if we see something that lucille's doing that may not be favorable to us like crying or whining or you know what we may call quote unquote throwing a tantrum <laughs> um or even at school if like i see a kid like the student i described throwing books Instead of automatically assuming, wow, this kid has problems. Oh, wow, this kid's needy. Like taking that vocabulary out of our brains yeah. and thinking like, you know what? I have no idea what's going on in their brain. I have no idea what caused them to do this. This is only what I'm seeing with my eyes. But I have really no idea what is the root cause. Well, like adults, they're humans. And they react for what's going on in their lives. Yep. So we, we have to... We have to try to remind ourselves that they are an individual they are a human being and they're going to react and, and act differently based on what's going on in their lives and you're not in their lives every second of the day they have different experiences than you do as well so 
sometimes you need to find the root of that cause and don't say it's okay. It's okay. Like ask questions. I mean, obviously we can't ask Lucille questions right now, (laughs) but you know, we can be there and tend to her. And you know, if, if, if she needs to be coddled a little bit, then maybe that's what she needs in order for her to feel better. Or maybe she needs to be on the boob for a few minutes and, and get some milk. Yeah. We don't know what it is because she can't communicate with us, but we know that she's feeling something and because I think, she's a yeah. human and we need to try to figure that out so Just that we can experimenting yeah. for babies at yeah. least like let me see if she's hungry let me see if she needs to sleep let me change her diaper and i think changing our thinking of just quick to react and then thinking like how can i find what's causing this and then just educating ourselves on where what developmental changes is she going through like could this be a factor sure, and then just accepting it and going with it instead of fighting the chaos yeah and it kind of goes back to um just with kids in my classroom like i feel like much like an illness we're quick to find a medication that's going to like be a quick fix and just hide the symptoms and you know solve the problem but most likely that situation or illness is going to keep coming back and keep coming back so i feel like finding the root cause of what's causing that it takes a lot of time it does it takes a lot of experimenting it takes a lot of our patience but that is what's going to help in the long term like live happier and healthier lives and i feel like much like illness it it relates right back to kids and problems even adults and problems instead of reacting and trying to just put a band-aid over the situation which sometimes you may have to do but really diving deep into figuring out like what's really causing this to sure. happen and it it's really hard to do that we fail to do that in a lot of aspects of our lives and for, it's funny like i always think back to politics when when you bring something up like that but i'm not trying to get into politics on this podcast at all but like again we just never seem to like you say find the root cause it's always trying to put a band-aid on it and you know hopefully it heals or 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 medicate it one way or another and and hopefully it goes away but oftentimes that's not the case because it's not addressing the root cause Mm -hmm. um excuse me um but yeah (laughs) And also, um, I kind of blurbed a little bit about this on my Insta story the other day, but my mindset on how I treat kids and how I talk to kids has completely changed. Mm -hmm. I now try really hard and takes a lot of practice to communicate to kids just like I do with adults, to be authentic through and through. Now, I may not cuss with kids. That's the only thing I change with my vocabulary. Say earmuffs. I think we we always make assumptions that like they're not going to understand, they don't know any better, or they're not gonna they're not gonna understand how to use this word. But these assumptions are so false. And the moment we actually like dive in deeper, and we find out kids know a lot more than we think. Yep. But we just make assumptions and say, "Hey, I'm going to teach this, whether I know what they know or not." But anyway, so just talking to my students like I do with adults has. Wow, the relationship we have and their vocabulary has grown so much. Like I've been teaching them new vocabulary words like maybe every three weeks to get them practicing it. Now they use the word candor. I mean, they're using the (laughs) word coherent. They're using the word jubilant and they know how to use it because it takes constant modeling and constant practicing. And there was a point in the classroom like because I'm still breastfeeding, I have to pump. And I kept saying, oh, I have I have to go to a meeting, kids. I got to. You know, I I refused to tell them what I was really doing because I kept thinking they're they're gonna think they're not gonna understand yeah they're not gonna understand or they're gonna think it's silly or they're gonna be like ew gross so I I kept saying every time I had to pump I gotta go to a meeting kids gotta go to a meeting and one of my kids finally said Miss Cassonia like what meetings are you going to like what is happening and part of me was like I I can't lie to you guys you pulled the old George Washington I cannot <laughs> tell a lie but seriously it's like, I did chop down that cherry tree. <laughs> The relationship that I built with them was so real and authentic. Like, I couldn't pretend anymore. And I just let down that wall of thinking I knew what was best and said, all right, kids, I'm going to have a conversation with you. And I hope that you put on your mature hats because what I'm going to tell you may seem a little interesting or weird or different. And I showed them the pump (laughs) that I used. And I related back to an engineer designed this pump to help mothers and pretty much just what the human body does and kept relating it back to, you know, this is part of life. This is what our bodies are meant to do as mothers. And 
They looked at me and first their mouth was open like, oh my God, I can't believe Miss Kaselniak is talking about this. And But you know what? After that conversation, they were like, we get it. And I told them like, you know what? You may not want to tell your friends this because they may. They might not be as mature as you now but before that you've I, gone yeah. through this conversation. But before I even said that, the kids were like, we know Miss Kaselniak. They may not understand. And they may they may say, ew, and that's gross, but we understand. And I was like, this that's is cool. so fucking good. We got to start treating kids like adults. We have to start using the vocabulary so that they understand what's going on. Yeah. And we think they don't. We think that we're protecting them or sheltering them from the world. But really, we're not doing them any service by hiding that. Like, there's certain things that, yes, developmentally are not appropriate. But like I was learning on one of my podcasts that we should be teaching kids the real names of the human body parts. Like we use words like that's your private parts or that's your Susie. That's what we grew up learning. Like <laughs> your vagina or vulva was called your Susie. But we need to start being real with kids. And the more we don't have shame in it, they're not going to have shame in it. Right. It's going to empower them because they know it. And knowledge is freaking power. So anyway. I agree. My mindset on how we talk to kids and how we treat kids has completely changed. I don't view myself on a pedestal. I don't view myself as being of higher power or, you know, that I'm better than them and they need to listen to me. It's we're co-travelers. We're in this together and they respect me more. Our conversations are better. They're not afraid to talk about anything. It's just it's completely changed my world in the classroom. And I can't wait to do all of this stuff with Lucille, everything that I've learned. And I'm grateful for my job as a teacher because I don't know if I would be the parent I'm going to be in the future or today unless I was a teacher. I love it. And I love <laughs> hearing these stories about the way you're interacting with your kids. I know I said it earlier, but I mean, it just brings me joy that they have somebody in their lives who is truly cares about them, their learning and you know what's important to them. And I just want to say to all you teachers out there, much love to you because I know teaching is hard. It is. And there's only one of you and 20 little babies in your classroom, and it's 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 tough. And you, but I will say that it is possible to do this. And I don't have any help. And I have 21 beautiful babies. I call them babies in my classroom. And I just want to let you know and encourage you that it is possible. And your classroom may not look like a typical disciplined classroom but that's where the real learning and relationships take place definitely and i've seen it and my kids are growing if you even look at their data i know data is huge like they're reading they're doing math they're solving but where when you actually take the time to get to know the kids instead of look at a curriculum book and just meet them where they are and then just just teach them what they're interested in it's just it's just transformed my life it is. And it's I, awesome. I know. I'm going to stop because I could talk forever about being a teacher and everything I've learned, but it's just so fucking rad. It is. <laughs> so what resources do we have for some people? Okay. So resources. Um, I did refer- reference my blog, The Clean and Simple Life. So I did write a blog post about why I don't want my dream kitchen anymore. And that has to go back to my mindset, why I don't want it anymore. And... We kind of talked about that earlier, so I won't go deep into that. It's Um, a good read. But I also have a blog post called Gratitude Equals Healthy Living. And this ties into the resource um, is a book. It's called The Gratitude Diaries by Janice Kaplan. I've heard that book. And that blog post I wrote pretty much sums up everything applicable that I got from that book that I'm applying to my life now And I kind of jotted down my 30 top quotes or phrases that were in that book that just spoke to me. And I think if they spoke to me, they could be great reminders for you. And they're great quotes even just to write on a mirror or write on a chalkboard in your room or just hang somewhere to just be that constant reminder that you have enough, you are enough, and to just appreciate the now versus the past and the future. I'd say a good place is like the bathroom mirror, like your bathroom mirror. Because you see it every morning when, you, do that. when you wake up. Like I know we and have you a, yeah. see it every evening before you go to bed. So if there's should, like goals yeah. or anything like that, put that on your bathroom mirror. Get one of those marker with those you know, um, whiteboard whiteboard markers that you can put on there, and yeah, put it on your mirror or print it out. Who what? Who knows? But it's idea. there when you wake up in the morning, and it's there when you go to bed in the evening. 
And like I said, it's hard work having a mindset that's all about positive thinking yeah. and gratitude. So you need those constant reminders. And Absolutely. I don't feel ashamed to have them all over my house. Like, I need it. No. I need it. <laughs> it helps us keep that positive mindset. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and another resource that I have is Simple Families. It's a podcast and... Um, Showing some podcast love. She is. She has a PhD and I think it's in child psychology and she has a website too and we will link all of these amazing resources in our show notes. But listening to her podcast has really helped transform how I teach, how I interact with the kids because she delivers a lot of science-based information and I feel like it helps to know the why behind things like she may have a topic of a, like why the kids need to get outdoors more but then she'll have somebody on that's an expert in that category like well the reason why we need to get outside more is because scientifically the this is the research behind it and i think that's some people need that yeah they we just, all need to get outside more they don't want to take things for face value and this is one of those podcasts for parents or adults because honestly i think that even if you don't have kids a lot of the lesson she has for quote unquote kids applies to adults as well because we're basically big kids. And what's healthy for kids. I'll keep saying it. We're humans. It's like if you hear lessons for kids, it's relatable to adults. Like we should be doing more of what kids are doing. We should have recess, you know, like we should be exploring more and playing more. Like we're, we're so trained that we have to be serious and working, you know, it anyway, I can get on tangent in that myself. But anyway, her podcast is fantastic. It's not only teaches you the why and how to, pretty much anything with kids and she focuses on positive parenting and even minimalism with kids which I know a lot of parents are fearful of like I'm not buying my kid enough toys I'm not giving my kid enough but honestly the research shows that kids thrive more and are more creative with the less they have and I feel like some of the parents I've talked to who they have just a ton of toys for their kids like look back on it and say I would completely do it over differently if I had to do it over again so yeah, don't fall into that trap. I mean, I've seen it with my classroom. Like, we don't have much in my classroom. and it's distracting. The kids, they're so much more creative when you give them less. Yeah. And we think that we're not a good parent because we're not giving them enough. But really, they just need more love. They need our attention. More attention, more energy versus stuff. Yeah. So anyway, she dives into great conversations um, about movement, play, just being outdoors, just really relatable topics for every human being. So I just want to give her so much praise and I'm just extremely grateful for her podcast for just opening up that conversation. And I know she has courses online you can take and I'm probably going to be taking that pretty soon now that Lucille's becoming older because even I want more expert advice because I can't know it all. Like even though I'm a teacher, I still need those constant reminders and knowledge is power. So I'm very grateful for that resource of Simple Family. So thank you. Her name is Danae, I believe. So thank you so much, Danae. And uh, that's wonderful. That's for my resources. <laughs> Let's do the quote of the day. Yay! The quote of the day is by Janice Kaplan, who is the author of the Gratitude Diaries. Nice. And her quote that is. That seems appropriate. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I like to tie everything together in a nice bow and deliver it. Um, you do a good job at that, by the way. Thank you. You did. Appreciate it. From the very beginning to the very end of the episode, (laughs) you tie it all together, baby. I feel like that's what a good comedian does. They always tie things back around. Always bring it back. Which makes the jokes that much better when everything relates. I agree. Um, But anyway, uh, the quote of the day is, if you trade expectations for appreciation, the world instantly changes. Sweet. I dig it. So if you take action from anything that you heard today... It's just to appreciate more. Look at what you have. Know that you're enough. Know that everything you have is enough. And that just completely will change your world. Be open. Stay open. And uh, Don't be quick to judge. Yes. And once you appreciate your yourself more and just understand why you are the way you are, you just make less assumptions and you just can have more empathy to understand that People are not like you and they all have a story and they all have a history of what made them the way they are and you can't change them. You can only change you. Exactly. We're all unique. Unique New York. (laughs) Unique New York. Unique New York. Good Anchorman quote. Yes. Like that. I like like Anchorman. It's a good movie. (laughs) 
But anyways, I think that that's it, right, Jilly? Yeah, I'm really heated. Like I felt like this was you a need really another fun cocktail no. to wind down. <laughs> no, I don't know that. Well, that could wind down, but anyway, um, I'm just grateful we have this platform to talk about this, yes. and this was a lot of fun. So thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We will see you next week. See you later. We want to thank everybody for listening today. Please be sure to subscribe and sign up to receive notifications so you know when the next episode is live. If you like today's episode and know someone who could benefit from the topic we covered, please share it with them. And if you have any suggestions for us and want to chime in on today's topic, you can email us at simplifiedchaospodcast at gmail.com, and that's chaos with a K, or send us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you next time.